was made of thorns. His jewels were bright rubies of red. His royal apparel, designed with a scourge, waving bright crimson stripes on his holy tray. And oh, My king's apparel, he wore it so well. And oh, oh, oh he wore it so well. My king's apparel, he wore it so well. His jewelry were nails in his hands and his feet. No throne he hung on, a cruel tree. His royal carpet was blood in the sand. Crucify Jesus, we sinners demand. Oh, oh, oh he wore it so well. My king's apparel, he wore it so well. And oh, 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 he wore it so well. My king's apparel, he wore it so well. His life for the sinner, he willingly Jesus was righteous, was never death slave. My almighty King conquered death and the grave. And oh, he wore it so well. My King's apparel, he wore it so well. And oh, 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 he wore it so well. My king's apparel, he wore it so well. And oh, oh he wore it so well. My king's apparel, he wore it so well. And oh, he wore it so well, my king's apparel, he wore it so well. Take your Bible and turn to Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4, today we're going to be talking about circumcision of the heart. I pray the Lord will use it in our lives. I won't keep you long, but I want you to pay attention. This is the house of the Lord. It's not a time to talk. It's not a time to socialize. But it's a time to listen to what God has to say to all of us. Jeremiah chapter 4 the Lord is talking to the nation about their waywardness, their lack of love, their lack of dedication to God. And he tells them in verse 4, Circumcise yourselves to the Lord, and take away the foreskins of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Heavenly Father, have your will in your way, I pray. Help me to 
be able to share the message that you've placed on my heart. May all of us take your word into our lives and apply it. May the Holy Spirit make it effectual. Father, we pray for all of the sick. We lift up all the ones on our prayer list. We pray for the Combs family. We pray for Cheryl Thomas. We pray for Nolan and Brooke and their family. We pray, dear Lord, for all those that uh, are having problems. We pray for Paige. We pray for uh, Miss Beatty in the hospital, ICU. And Lord, we just ask that you'll go with us now. And if there's one in our number not saved, that today might be the day when you'd touch their heart and do a work of grace. Thank you for each one who's here. May we love each other, pray for each other. And Lord, if there be any bitterness or any envy or hatred in our hearts, please take it away because we need to love each other and to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our strength. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for let me have my 64th birthday for letting me be here with so many that I love and that love me. Lord, you've been so good to me, and I'm thankful that in 1978, on my 18th birthday, I had a new birth, and you changed my heart, and I thank you for that, Lord. Please now, bless I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Notice it tells us here in Jeremiah that the Lord wants the people to circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Now those of you who've been around a while, maybe some of the children may not understand this, but the word circumcise was for boys. And when boys were eight days old, they would be circumcised under the Jewish law, and that circumcision was a covenant that God had made with Abraham. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, the Apostle Paul applies that to the New Testament, and he talks about the fact that each of us need our hearts circumcised. So ladies you can say that you've had a circumcision of your heart if you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God has done a work in your heart and He has circumcised you to the Lord. Now let me tell you a little story. When I was born in the old Nita Hospital over in Manchester, Kentucky, they my mom and dad wanted me to be circumcised. Well, it cost $25 to do it. My dad didn't have any money. He was broke, totally. My dad had just been through a dynamite explosion, had lost his leg, had been in the hospital. My mom didn't have $25. Well, the doctor talked to my mom and said that they would go ahead and circumcise me anyway but somehow in the, in the mix of things, they never did circumcise me. So when I was a little boy, I started having a lot of problems down in my private area. And I had to go to the doctor, and they did some very painful things to me without numbing me as a little boy. And then when I was 18, I had to go into the hospital uh, and be circumcised. I had a real circumcision because of some problems that had developed. Now, I understand that it's something that for a little boy, eight years old, you don't really feel a lot of pain, even though uh, the Jews did it on the eighth day because they felt children were more capable of dealing with the pain at eight. Uh, this was a discussion I had with the doctor when Adam was born. 
I wanted to wait until the eighth day because I, I, from what I'd studied, you are not emotionally prepared for that kind of pain until you're eight days old. But they went ahead and did it earlier anyway. Now, I want you to see how that the Bible uh, talks about that the descendants of the Lord would be circumcised in the heart. Hold your place at Jeremiah 4 and turn to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is the fifth book in the Bible. You have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then you have Deuteronomy. Now let's go to Deuteronomy 30, and let's look at verse number 6 of Deuteronomy. Verse number 6. And notice what it says. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. So notice that the Lord is saying that he would circumcise the hearts of the people and as they followed the Lord, he would circumcise the heart of their children. Do you know that one of the greatest blessings in the world is being born to a Christian family where you are taught about God and raised up in the things of the Lord? I didn't have that when I was a boy. I, my mom and dad were both lost, and I learned all the bad things. I didn't have anyone in my life who was a good role model. But when the Lord saved me at 18, I began to witness to my dad, to my mom, to my sisters, to everybody I knew. And the Lord saved my dad, my mom, my sisters, and many other people. And I saw how their hearts changed. And now... The Lord has blessed me with four wonderful children, and I have three sons-in-laws and a daughter-in-law, and I have 11 grandchildren, and I have claimed that promise that God would save all of my family, all of my children, all of my grandchildren, and that God would circumcise their hearts. Now notice what occurs. Look at the middle of verse 6. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. You know that love is such a needed thing in our world today. Look at what's going on in our world today. There is so much hate. You know, everybody is so angry and, and unforgiving. And the Bible tells us that we are to love. We're to love our enemies. We're to love those that would persecute us and would say all manner of evil against us. You say, well, why do we do that? We do that because Jesus commanded us to do that. And notice he says, you love me with all your heart, with all your soul, and then notice these last four words, that thou mayest live. That thou mayest live. You know, you can be alive, but you're not really living the kind of life that is honoring to God. There were 18 years of my life when I was alive, but I was not living a life of satisfaction and joy. I didn't know what joy was about. I didn't understand the salvation that came to me through Christ. Now, he says that the Lord in verse 7, Thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute thee. Listen, you don't have to get even with people. Just leave that with God. God will take care of fighting our battles, won't He? 
That's why we don't need to fight our battles. We just simply need to put our trust in God and wait upon Him and the Lord will execute vengeance in His time. Now he says about this, I want you now to take your Bible and I want you to turn with me to Colossians. The book of Colossians is in the New Testament. You go to Ephesians and then Philippians and then you go to Colossians. And Colossians chapter 2, the Bible says uh, about uh, circumcision. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11. In fact, I've already got it written down here. So let me just read this. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11. Here's what it says. I want you to take this into your heart. The Bible says, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Now we all know that to perform a circumcision, you have to use your hands. A surgeon uses a scalpel and makes the cuts and they circumcise. Well, this one is a circumcision without hands. It's where God goes into the heart and God gives you a new heart. Notice, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now how does that start? Well, number, verse number 12, buried with Him in baptism. Wherein also ye are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised Him from the dead. After a person commits their life to the Lord and they get a new heart, they are to make that public. They're to come forward and say, I've put my trust in Christ and He's given me a new heart. And then they follow the Lord in baptism. Baptism doesn't change your heart, but baptism is saying my heart has been changed and I'm going to follow Christ. And then He says uh, that it is it works through faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins, notice, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now you know what a trespass is? There are people that put up signs that say no trespassing. And you step over the line onto their property and they can prosecute you for trespassing. Now the word trespass means that we know better, but we do it anyway. You've, you, we've all committed trespasses. We know better, but we do it anyway. And we have seen that the Lord forgives us of that. And notice it says that he forgives us trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance, verse 14, that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to His cross. See, that's why He died. He died so that my sins and your sins could be forgiven. And when you believe in your heart, that Jesus was the Son of God and that He died for your sins and you ask Him to forgive you and come into your life, then you are confessing what God has done in the heart. And sometimes it starts out very small. You know, if, if you went up to a little boy who had been circumcised and he had on a diaper and his clothes... You couldn't tell that he had been circumcised. You couldn't tell whether or not it had happened. But as that little boy grows, 
circumcision becomes a very important thing. We know that doctors today, there are some that are saying it's not right, but we know that God said it was good. And it prevents certain kinds of cancer and infection, and God uses it as a type. Now there's another passage that I'd like you to see in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 2, the Bible says in verse number 29, Romans 2 and verse number 29. Notice this. The Bible says, But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Now we can't take credit for our salvation. We can't take credit for what God does. We give Him all the glory. We give Him all the praise because He has done this marvelous work of circumcision. So you can see that you could be a physical Jew, but if you have not had the inward heart circumcised, you are still in the flesh and you are still dominated by the natural laws of life. Now, Jesus told us in Mark chapter 9, verse 43, He says, If thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched. So notice He talks about that our, our parts of our body that offend us and the things that we can do, it's better for us to eliminate that from our, our lives. And in Matthew 3.12, he says, "...whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire." Matthew 25, 41 says basically the same thing. Then shall they say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Do you know that if you do not get a new heart, you will die in your sins? When God gives you a new heart, you think different. You act different. I remember as a boy, one time I got into an argument with another boy, and uh, I had a real bad temper. What he did is he had stuck his hand in my bag of potato chips, and he took about half the bag with one and I, did, I told him he could have one, and he just stuck his hand and took the whole bag, half the bag. Well, I got mad, and I punched him right in the nose. I mean, I literally, blood was running down his nose, and, and I thought, sure, he would jerk his dukes up and start to fight me. Well, he didn't. He put his hand on his nose, and he said, why did you hit me, Tony? And I said, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit you, but you, you stole my potato chips. And, uh, you know, the, the, the teacher came and she uh, put some things in his nose and put ice on it and finally got his nose to stop bleeding. And after that was over, we were out on the playground and he came up to me and he, he, said, uh, he said, Tony, I forgive you. He said, I shouldn't have taken your potato chips. And I said, I shouldn't hit you either. Now, if he hadn't have said that to me, 
I would have probably been really angry at him. I would have thought that when we got out on the playground, he would have wanted to start a fight with me. But you know what I learned? That boy was a Baptist preacher's son. And he had a new heart. And I didn't. And he loved me even though I punched him right in the nose. Now I got my bottom busted. But back then the teachers didn't talk to you. I mean they laid a paddle to my hide. And I'm glad they did. And then, then they called my mom and told her. And then she gave me another one when I got home. And uh, I learned a great lesson about uh, punching people and hitting people. Young people, we need to learn that you cannot do those kind of things. You can't hit each other. You can't do things physically to hurt each other. You need to be kind to each other. And, and if you'll practice that, it shows that you've got a new heart. You don't have to get even. I remember when our children were little, they'd get in the back seat and one would say, Daddy, she touched me. And I'd, I'd go look in the back and I'd say, Okay, who touched you? Well, she touched me, Daddy. I'd say, Okay, now don't touch her again. Well, we'd get down the road about five miles and then the other one would say, Daddy, she touched me. I'd say, girls, you want me to pull this, this car over and deal with this? Well, they'd say, no, don't do that, Daddy, don't do that. I'd say, okay, now, no more punching, no more touching, no more doing this. About 10 miles down the road, Daddy, she hit me, she pulled my ears, she, she hit my leg. And it was just a constant back and forth back and forth and I would plead with them I'd say children love each other your brothers and sisters be kind to each other and you know now I have to confess when I was growing up as a boy I wasn't really uh, good to my sisters either there were times that I did mean things to them and you know if they flipped my ear or they did something to me I thought I had to get even with them but you know, when the Lord saved me, I have the most wonderful relationship with my sisters today. They call me. We love each other. When we're around each other, we, 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 there's just this bond you feel that you love each other. And I'm so thankful that God can give you a new heart and you can deal with things in the righteous way rather than in the flesh. Now there's another thing I'd like to show you in the book of Philippians. Philippians comes right after the book of Ephesians. Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, and then Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. I want you to read this with me. Verse 5. Now here's Paul, the apostle, and he says this, notice. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Now that's what the apostle Paul was before he was saved. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Now when it came to the law, he followed it. But he persecuted the churches. And he did not have a circumcised heart. Let me tell you a story. This is a true story. In the late 1600s, there was a pastor, back then they called him Barbs, and he had preached a sermon, and the Catholic bishop sent out a decree to have him arrested 
because he had called the Roman Catholic Church the Antichrist. Well, he began to run for his life, and he lived near the French Alps. So he ran into the mountains of the French Alps, and there were three of the guards of the bishop chasing him. Now they got on this lake of ice, and as they were running across, the bishop or the, or the pastor, the barb, he got to the other side, but he looked back, and those three men had fallen into the ice. Now you know what he could have done? He could have just let them drown, but he didn't. He went to the bank. He picked up a big piece of stick, wood, and he carried it out to the place where they were, and he put that big piece of, of log down in the water, and it was able to hit the bottom, and those men were able to climb out. He even built a fire for them, and as soon as he built the fire, he took off running. They captured him that night. They brought him back. And you know what they did to him? They burned him at the stake. Now if you want to read about that, that's in Fox's Book of Martyrs. This man preached the word of God and told the truth and because of it, he was fleeing for his life and he could have allowed these men to die, but rather than do that, he saved their lives. Those same men arrested him and took him back and had him executed. People say, well, that don't make sense. Why would he help them like that? He could have just let them drown and he could have went on. And, but you see, he had a new heart. When you've got a new heart... You help people. You love people. People who don't deserve it. I don't deserve to be loved. You don't deserve to be loved. But God loves us. And God cares about our, our lives. And we are to show that love in return to others. Galatians chapter 3 says Galatians is right before the book of Ephesians. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 says, And if ye be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Do you know that when you get a circumcised heart, you become a child of, of Abraham. Your heart is circumcised to the Lord and you take away the foreskin of your heart. This is speaking of a circumcision that takes place spiritually. The Bible says that it is a circumcision without hands and it is for the praise of God not of man. And the Bible tells us that circumcision is a minor medical procedure performed on males, often as infants, but sometimes as teens. Medically speaking, it involves removing the foreskin. It is controversial in some places, but has been practiced for many thousands of years. The reasons for this vary. And the Bible tells us in a very beautiful picture that God uses this as an understanding of what happens in salvation. Circumcision marked a covenant established with Abraham and God. You can read about it in Genesis 17 verse 1 through 14. And in their stay in Egypt, the Jews were deeply immersed in the Egyptian 
culture and they began to drift away from circumcision. Joshua 24 tells us about that. But then they began to practice it again. Shortly after crossing the river Jordan, they put circumcision back into practice. Throughout the remainder of the Old Testament, we will see that there were often mentions made of circumcision. The idea of circumcision of the heart is a biblical promise. It is something that God does that changes the affections, the emotions, and everything about a person. Not too long ago, I was texting and on Facebook with a, <coughs> a man I went to high school with. And uh, he had uh, been reading some of my posts, and, and he said, Tony, what in the world has happened to you? He said, I went to high school with you. I remember you playing basketball and, and growing up with you and all the stuff we did as boys and stuff. And he said, you're totally different now. He said, the things that you post and, and the, the stuff that you write about is, is so different. He said, how did all this happen? And I told him, I said, did, hadn't you never heard that in 1978 I got saved? Right after I graduated from high school, I got saved at Levi Baptist Church. And the Lord changed my life. Folks, I'm not going to tell you what all I was doing, but I was a mess. The Lord actually saved my life because if God hadn't have intervened, I, I couldn't even imagine where I would be today. I hope today that if you don't have a, a new heart, that you would have, that He would circumcise your heart and make you into a new creature. Does not the Bible say that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature? Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. I want to tell you something. If you've got a new heart, you're going to love the Lord. Amen. You're going to want to study His Word. You're going to want to worship Him. You're going to want to do His will. Your language will change. The kind of words you use. Your thoughts will change. The things you do will change because you've got a new heart. Amen. Father, I thank You, Lord, for Your Word. I thank You for this time we've had together. Lord, I pray that we could all remember and understand that Jesus died for our sins and He was buried and raised from the dead that we might get a new heart. Thank You that even the thief on the cross who at one time was cursing and mocking our Lord got a new heart on the cross when He said, Lord, remember me when You come into Your kingdom. And Jesus said, Today You'll be with me in paradise. Father, I ask your will be done now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I trust